Hi, this is Amy Romeo from the jewelry making and craft blog, amyromeo.com. And on this channel, I like to share fun and easy jewelry making and craft projects. Today in this video, I'll be showing you how to make these really pretty summery hibiscus keychains made from faux leather, heat transfer vinyl, and a Cricut. I'll show you a couple different color variations to get your creative juices flowing. And then I'll walk you through step-by-step -step on how to make these keychains using your Cricut. You could use the Maker, the Maker 3, the Explore Air 2, the Explore 3, or even the Cricut Joy. So if you're ready to learn how to make these hibiscus keychains, let's go ahead and get started. So let's go over the tools and materials I'm gonna be using while I'm making this hibiscus keychain using faux leather and heat transfer vinyl. So this is a really simple design. It's actually a really good beginner faux leather keychain project because it only has three layers. The bottom, this darker pink is faux leather, and then the lighter pink and the yellow, those are both heat transfer vinyl. And to sort of vary the look on this keychain, it's a little hard to see, but the yellow is a glitter heat transfer vinyl, and the light pink is a really matte sort of solid, and then the faux leather is a different color, so you get a nice contrast. And I made a few different options with pastel colors, you know, pinks and yellows and purples, but you can make these using any colors you'd like. So the faux leather that I'm using just comes on a roll from, this is from Amazon, but you can use any faux leather on a sheet. I'll leave links to some of my favorite faux leathers for you in the description. And I'm just using a solid heat transfer vinyl. You can use foil iron-on, you could use any heat transfer vinyl you'd like. And again, if you wanted to use glitter to add some interest, you could do that as well, or you could use solid. I'm using my Cricut Maker, but as I mentioned, you can use any of the five current Cricut machines because we are using that standard fine point blade to cut the faux leather. I'll use my purple strong grip mat to cut the faux leather and the green standard grip mat to cut the heat transfer vinyl. If you're using the Cricut Joy, just use the little green mat that comes with the Joy to cut the faux leather. It will be just fine. I'll use some blue painter's tape to help stick the faux leather really nicely down to my cutting mat. And to press the heat transfer vinyl onto the faux leather, I'll use my Easy Press Mini set on the low setting, but you could also use a traditional Easy Press set to about 265 degrees. I'll also use a pressing pad to protect my surface from the heat. And this is a little Teflon sheet I've just trimmed down to size. I'll use this as a cover sheet. You could also use butcher paper or parchment paper. Some other tools I'll use are some small crafting scissors. These are some curved scissors that are really great for trimming off the little fuzzies on the back of the faux leather. And I'm using some regular craft scissors, a weeding tool of your choice. You could use a hook weeding tool or a pin pen style, it's up to you. To attach the optional tassel, I'll use some jewelry making flat nose pliers. The key ring that I'm using is a one and a quarter inch split ring, like a regular key ring. I buy these on Amazon and they come in a silver finish like this or a gold finish. And because I'm adding an optional tassel, the tassels come in different lengths. These are faux suede, also from Amazon. Again, I'll link to all these items for you in the description. The little faux tassels, not only do they come in different colors of faux suede, they also have different metal colors for the caps. So just sort of match up your key ring color with your tassel color. And finally, the glue that I'll be using to assemble this fold over keychain, I'm using some Fabri-Tac. You could use this, you could use some Barely Art craft glue. Any good fabric glue will work for this project. So if you're ready to dive in, let's go ahead and get the SVG from my shop. We'll upload it to Cricut Design Space and then I'll show you how to make this keychain project. So to make this project, you'll want to get the SVG for the keychain from my SVG shop. I have hundreds of SVGs in my shop for keychains and earrings. At the time I'm recording this, I don't have the SVG for this project in my shop yet, but by the time you're watching this video, it will be there. You can click on the link here on the screen or get the link in the description. It'll bring you to a product page, just like my taco earrings SVG, and you'll see that you can either choose a personal use version, or you can choose a small commercial use version, which gives you a commercial use license to sell physical products made from my designs. Then you'll check out and you'll receive an email and you will download the SVG folder. The folder will be zipped and you will need to unzip it before you can upload the unzipped SVG file to Cricut Design Space. 
So we'll start on a blank canvas in Cricut Design Space and I will click on upload and then upload image and you'll want to browse to where the unzipped SVG file is for this project. You'll click on it to select it and that will bring it here into your recent uploads row. I already have it here uploaded so I will click on it to select it and then click add to canvas. And as I mentioned, this is a simple three layer project and you can see all three layers here. Keep in mind the colors on the screen, they're just colors that are suggestions. You can absolutely cut these layers from whatever faux leather or heat transfer vinyl you'd like. If you are cutting this on the Cricut Joy, you may need to size this down just a little bit so that it fits on that Joy size mat. And the way to do that is to just make sure all of your layers are selected and you can drag this little arrow here, drag it up a little smaller. And if you make sure that instead of this saying maker, if you're using the joy, this will say joy. And when you click make it, you'll see the preview on the joy size mat. And you just want to keep reducing this until you see that this project fits on the little green joy mat. So let me undo that, get it back to the original size. And I'm going to go ahead and click the make it button. I'm cutting the material on a mat. And here we'll see our three mats separated out in Design Space. So the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and click on each mat and then toggle that mirror button on. And that's because faux leather and heat transfer vinyl both cut in reverse. They cut face down on the mat. If you were using permanent vinyl to make this project, then the only mat you would mirror is the bottom one, the faux leather mat, because that will still cut in reverse. And the other vinyl mats, if you're using permanent vinyl, they don't cut in reverse, so those you would not mirror. I hope that makes sense. I'm using heat transfer vinyl and faux leather, so I've mirrored every mat. And now what I wanna do is just go through and drag each of my shapes just away from the edges a little bit and away from each other. So just sort of dragging them apart, clicking on each one, just giving them a little bit of space. Now I'll click back on the faux leather mat because that is the mat that I will cut first and I'll click continue. So the material that I use to cut faux leather is called faux leather paper thin and I have it bookmarked, sort of saved here as a favorite setting of mine. If you don't have this setting as a favorite or if you haven't used it before, you can click on browse all materials and search for it. I have it here. If you're using the Explore Air 2, you'll need to turn your dial to custom before you can search for this setting and find it. But I have it here, so I'll go ahead and click on it to select it. And then from the pressure drop down menu, I always choose more as my pressure. Then when I return to Design Space to cut these two vinyl mats, I'll cut them using the recommended setting depending on the type of vinyl. So I will be cutting the yellow mat from glitter vinyl, so I will use the glitter vinyl setting with default pressure. And this one I'll be using regular vinyl, so I will use either the vinyl setting or the washi sheet setting. But we'll go ahead and start with the faux leather mat. Let's click, click back to my overhead camera and we'll start cutting out our mats and then I'll show you how to assemble the keychain. So the first mat I'm going to cut is the faux leather mat and this faux leather happens to be on a roll. I saw in Design Space where my shape was positioned on the mat that I need a piece of faux leather about three and a half inches wide and about seven inches tall to completely cut out the hibiscus keychain shape. So if you're using a sheet, you'll just do the same process. I like to trim my faux leather down to a smaller size rather than putting a big piece of faux leather down on the mat. And that's one of the ways that helps you get really nice cuts with your Cricut. So I'm just gonna put this down, trim, doesn't have to be perfect. And I know this is longer than seven, but I know that my cut will end about here and then I'll be able to just save this little scrap for earrings or some other very small project. So I've got this ready to go. And now I'm going to use my blue painter's tape and just tape this material down on all sides. This is pieces of blue painter's tape that I've taken off and reused. I'm able to use them maybe three or four times before they start to lose their sticky or just get too crumbled up. So I've got my faux leather taped down, pretty side down. We have our faux leather paper thin setting ready to go in Design Space. 
So I'll just go ahead and load the mat and begin the cut. So the first cut is finished. I always recommend taking a sharp weeding tool and lifting up the edge of the keychain to make sure that the cut went all the way through. If it did, that's great, and this one looks pretty good. If not, as long as you have not unloaded your mat, you can repeat the cut by pressing the cut button again on one of the larger machines or by pressing the rerun button on the screen in Design Space if you're using the Cricut Joy. But I don't think I need to rerun this, so I'll go ahead and unload the mat. And then we'll carefully peel off our hibiscus shape. And this is a good time to show you how this works. So this is a fold over keychain. So the two halves fold over like this. Our little key ring will go here. We'll glue these two parts together and then we'll have the heat transfer vinyl pressed on either side. Okay, so I've got the faux leather mat cut out. I'm gonna head back over to Design Space and cut out our two vinyl mats. I'll weed them out and then we'll get back together here I'll have my Easy Press Mini on and we'll begin to press and then assemble the keychain. So the vinyl mats have finished cutting. The glitter vinyl mat that I just cut, I was cutting the Caesar glitter heat transfer vinyl. I don't know if you've used that before but it's a really nice thick glitter product and I end up cutting it using default pressure on the glitter setting, but I repeat the cut one extra time just to make sure that the cut went all the way through, especially when the cut is a little more detailed like this one is. So I'll just go ahead and weed that out. Again, you can use a weeding tool or your fingers or a pin pen tool, whatever you prefer. There's some little spikies and some little sort of sharp areas on this flower center, so I'm just going carefully. There we go. I hope you can see how pretty that glitter is. It's really sparkly. So I'm ready to press. I've got my Easy Press Mini set on the low setting, which is just that first green line. I have my heat pressing pad ready to go, my little cover sheet, and I'm going to first use my scissors and trim apart the vinyl layers so they're ready to press. So I mentioned earlier there were two steps to assembling this keychain. One involves gluing the keychain together and the other involves pressing the vinyl onto the faux leather. We are going to press the vinyl first and then we are going to glue. And that's because if we glue first and then we press with heat, it can cause the glue underneath to bubble and distort the shape of our faux leather, which we don't want. So we're going to press first and then glue. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my little layer here and try and match it up. There's a, a smaller sort of area that juts out and that's where this little part sticks up. So you wanna place it down I left an even border all around the vinyl layer. It sort of creates an outline, you could see here. So just make sure that your outline is nice and even. Then we'll just use our little cover sheet, cover, and then we'll press using the Easy Press Mini. I'll press for about 10 seconds. If you're using a regular Easy Press, you don't need to move it like I am with the iron. You can just set it down. After about 10 seconds, I will try to carefully peel away the cover sheet. If the cover sheet and the vinyl lift up, I would just place this right back down and repeat the pressing in about five second increments until I'm able to cleanly lift off this cover sheet. But that looks good. I'll just flip it over and do the other side. And remember, this is a fold over keychain, so whatever's on this side on this part is going to be now on this side on this part because when they fold over, the two halves need to match up front to back. If, if you need to, you can refer back to the uploaded SVG in Design Space to sort of remind yourself of what goes where when you're pressing your layers. 
And the suggestion I just made of looking back in Design Space to sort of see what direction layers go in is a good one for this little center part of the flower. I'm not gonna look it up on Design Space right now, but I do have my finished sample I'm going to refer back to. Again, it's not the biggest deal in the world if you put it a different way. It's totally up to you, but if you wanna get it just like the picture, this helps. So let's see, I've got my little thing here, so I'm gonna flip that over and just sort of get this lined up in the center. That looks good. And we'll cover and we'll repeat the pressing again, five to 10 seconds. We'll flip that over. So once we've pressed both sides, this is starting to curl a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. When you press faux leather, it gets nice and flat, and then as it cools, it starts to curl a tiny bit. So what I wanna do, this part is still warm. What I wanna do is just press for a few seconds back on that, start, that side that's starting to curl, and I'm going to lay it here on my work surface and just put it underneath my pressing pad so it can cool in a flat position. What I'm going to do now is get a heavy book because our next step calls for a heavy book to help us get this keychain nice and flat. So I've got my book ready to go and I'm going to move aside my pressing pad and we're ready to glue our fold over keychain. So the first thing I'm going to do is flip it over and I want to put the key ring on now so that I'm not struggling with it later. Faux leather is pretty durable but I don't want to be rubbing a split ring key ring on this little bridge part here of the faux leather. So if I do it now, I don't have to worry about it later. All you have to do is sort of fold the flower into a little bit of a tube and then you can slide it onto the key ring. So I'm gonna place it down here and I'll be using the Fabri-Tac. You can use any good fabric glue or the Barely Art glue is really nice. I recommend a glue like this over something like E6000 E6000 is thicker and it's not going to be as flat when you glue it on and then press this keychain closed. We want to get a really nice flat press so our keychain will be thin and sort of seamless on the edges. So I'm just pressing glue. I'm applying glue all over the back of just one side of the keychain, only this side, and I'm avoiding the bridge part altogether. We don't want to get any glue on that. I'm getting very close to the edge, but not all the way to the edge, because when we fold this over and press, some of the glue will seep to the edges, which is what we want. We want it to seep right up to the edge. So now I'm just going to take the top part here, make sure you keep your key ring out of the way. Just fold over, and I'm trying to eyeball and line up the top and the bottom layers. So on the top, we don't see any of the bottom layer peeking out and I'll flip that over and do the same thing here. And that looks pretty good. See how the edge is very open and not sticking well together? That's totally normal. We are gonna fix that and take care of that. We're gonna let this dry under a heavy book and that is gonna help us get a really nice seamless edge. Another thing I like to do is I like to take my nine by nine easy press. It's turned off, it's not plugged in, but I do like to place it here on top. That will also help make a nice weight to keep this keychain nice and flat while it dries. So we'll go ahead and let that dry for a few hours and then we'll come back and we will apply the tassel. So our keychain has had a few hours to dry. I'm gonna move this out of the way and we'll look under our heavy book and see how our keychain did. And that's actually looking pretty good. If there's any little gluey bits sort of stuck to the side, you can peel them off or you can trim them with some small curved scissors. It's pretty easy to get the glue off if you got any in places you didn't want to. But see how nice and smooth and thin that edge is? That's from pressing this under the book and letting it dry. So before we attach the optional tassel, I just wanted to show you another little trick. 
See how the edge is white? If you don't like the edge of that white faux leather, you could use any color coordinated Sharpie marker and just sort of color the edges and go all the way around. I like to do this after I've glued the keychain so that I'm able to sort of get in the little crevice in between also. But you can go all the way around if you wanted to and color up that edge. So to attach the tassel, I'm just going to use a 10 millimeter jump ring. You could use an eight millimeter, which is a little smaller, or you could use something like a 12, that works too. And I'm just going to open this up like any other regular jump ring. Just opening that up and then I'll attach my tassel and attach it to the key ring and close the jump ring right back up. And there we go. The hibiscus keychain is complete. I hope you like this project and you're going to make some hibiscus keychains yourself. Let me know in the comments what colors you're going to use. I use some pinks and some purples, but there are so many pretty hibiscus colors. I'd love to know what you have in mind for your keychain. If you like this project, I have so many more great faux leather keychain tutorials using a Cricut. If you just keep watching, the playlist will begin and you'll be on to your next keychain tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification and then you'll be notified every time I post a new tutorial video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.